What is up, everybody? We got you with the LDL Season 7 Week 8 Power Rankings. I am the Lazy Ghost, joined by my partner here. Not Mark, but Mega Matt himself. Say hello, Matt. What's up, everybody? All right, and we are pretty excited to bring you the Power Rankings. So a little bit late, I apologize for that. Had some scheduling conflicts, but we are going to bring them to you. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the matches overall and where we're going to be at the standings at the end of Week 8. Uh, we had Mark taking on Arthur, uh, so that was my battle. I was able to come out victorious there. We had Trig taking on Coach Shea. Shea coming out with a big victory there. Jesse versus Anthony. Anthony falls to the Jetman in a sweeping fashion. We'll get into that one later. Uh, Brennan taking down Chris in a big matchup in the Kanto Conference. We had Steven overtaking Alejandro, which was a battle where both coaches were fighting for playoff life here. Coach Ranworth beating Jordan this week in a very good victory, very hard fought by Jordan's side, being able to bring that one back to a close matchup. Uh, Carlos pulling the victory over Brandon, and that was a very close battle. And finally, we had DJ beating yourself, and I promise I didn't put that last intentionally, but what did you think of the battles here in Week 8, Matt? Uh, you know, I think we're finally starting to see kind of where everybody's shaping up, and uh, there's a few close ones. Uh, there was my battle, which uh, wasn't, but um, no, I think I think there were some pretty good ones this week, huh? Yeah, overall, really good battles. I had fun watching them. So let's go ahead and jump into this week's power rankings with teams 9 through 16. And at 16, we have got the Kansas City Kingler and Coach Trigg. So, Matt, what do you think about that? Is that fair? Where, where do you think Trigg should be? Yeah, I think Trigg's on a pretty bad slide now. Um, he can make his way out of the basement, but um, it's just... It's been rough going for him for a while, and he hasn't hasn't really shown too much yet. Yeah, and I think um, his his lone victory was versus you, the first game of the season. And yep. I, I think if you had asked everybody in this uh, week one, you know, we we may have another rising rookie on our hands. But unfortunately, he has been able to find um, the vi the victory since then. I think he has a team that can do it, and he's been doing really well in the Evo League. So I think for mm -hmm. any rookie, they just need that year of experience under their belt before they really make a charge. And uh, excited to see what he can do the rest of the season, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. So at number 15, we have the Clearfield Charmander and Coach Jordan. So, Matt, what are you thinking about the number 15 slot? I think Jordan's uh, hes definitely improving. He's, he's shown a lot of spirit. Um, he's had a bunch of tough matches in a row. Um but uh, no, I think this is fair for now. I think he can definitely prove that he can. He deserves to be higher. But um, yeah, other coaches have been have been kind of um, picking up the crucial Ws uh, more than him so far. Yeah, I think for him, really the the struggle's been he doesn't really have the wall core right. So he has to either make mm -hmm. a really aggressive switch or just stay in, knowing that he could t get KO'd and deal as much damage as possible. So. Against some of the other off hyper offensive teams, I'm excited to see how he plays because his team matches up well with other hyper offense variants. But the slow, bulky, bulky offense variants have given him trouble so far. But uh, definitely a lot of season left, and definitely a lot of uh, games left for Jordan to kind of change our minds on that number 15 slot. But with that said, let's go ahead and jump into the number 14 slot. We've got the Lake Erie Gyarados and. Coach number three of the Ohio Trofec Ohio Trifecta here uh, at 12, 13, and 14. What do you think about Coach Shea in the 14 spot? Um, You know, I think Shea might be able to be a bit higher here. Uh, but he did uh, pull out a win on, on Trig, who hasn't been doing so hot. Um, yeah, Shea uh, started off his draft league career uh, on a high note. Um, but he hasn't been quite able to replicate that success um, in in a more experienced league here. Um, but yeah, I think I think this is appropriate for him. Um, again, he he could use a little bit more of the experience as well. But um, uh, he's he's got a solid team and he's he's shown he can play. So yeah, he's shown he definitely he can deserves play to be here. And he, and he got a big win versus Trig this week. 
raising yeah. him up to three wins. So not out of it, but he's going to have to really, really finish the season strong, pretty much winning most of his games. So if mm-hmm. anybody can do it, he's shown that he can do it in the past. So maybe he's able to. Uh, he's he's got me coming up. Two. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna have a really tough one versus you too. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, we've uh, we'll go ahead and jump into the 13th slot. We have got the Midwest Mill Tank and Coach Chris. Now I'll go ahead and start off with my analysis here. He took on Coach Brennan in what was a a very a very good match to watch. I mean, there's there's no other real way to put it. Um, I thought Brennan had really good prep, which showed, and he was able to pull out the victory this week. So that's why he dropped a little bit. But by no means out of it, Kanto is pretty wide open when it comes to those that that three, four, five spot, and it's going to be probably a team at or around the 500 win percentage. And so, even though Chris is sitting at I believe three and four after this, no, three and five after this week, he's still got a good mm-hmm. chance if he can finish up strong and get into the playoffs. So, what do you think about the Midwest Mill thing? I think uh, I, I really like his team. Um, he showed me firsthand what uh, what it can do, um, and I really like his his weather core. I think Sun is like uh, um, not quite as utilized as as say um, Rain or Sand, but uh, no, he's got yeah, he's got the, he's got the synergy too. Like he's got two sun setters, he's got uh, solar power, he's got um, chlorophyll, like. It's and, a, it's, uh, it's a... and the moonlight crest, yeah, which yeah, the heals seventy five percent, so or two thirds percent. It's it heals sixty six percent. And so and yeah, easy. Chris, Chris definitely uh, has the ability, uh, and he's he's put in a lot of good battles this season. Um, so he's definitely one to watch out for as a uh, as a kind of dark horse to to claim that last playoff spot. I think. Right. Yeah. And now we will jump over to the last of the Ohio three. And the Lakewood Trevenant and Coach Alejandro, he is the farthest drop that we got this week. So dropping to the number 12 slot based on last week, he had a really tough battle and went down to Steven. And I think going into that battle, he absolutely had to win. Steven also absolutely had to win. The Ratty Blue Wizard comes out on top. And unfortunately, Alejandro, things look pretty bleak for his playoff shot. Unless he's able to just have the finish of all season, or the finish of just what would pretty be a, a pretty remarkable LDL finish if he's able to win out from here, and that's how he gets into the playoffs. But if anybody can do it, it's the Beard. So what do you think about this number twelve slot? Yeah, no, I know I uh, I've been helping Beard prep a lot. I know his team uh, pretty well. He puts a lot of thought in and a lot of effort in. Um, I think some of it just breaks down in games making uh, two hard reads or, or something like that. But uh, I had a great battle with him last year. I'm looking forward to our battle in week 12 because uh, he's definitely going to be fighting for it as well. Like, uh, it's it's he's no slouch. Yeah. And at number 11, we have the highest riser out of anybody on the power rankings. We've got the Chelsea Fellstingers and Coach DJ. And I really think that this is kind of a testament to you, Matt. You've been playing really well this season for DJ to make all the roster moves that he has to put himself in a position where he was able to beat you. I think just speaks to how much he's grown as a player since week one. And I think he the, the changes he made to his roster were really great changes. And he is surging at this point. He's had good battles versus everybody as soon as he started making a few roster moves. So what do you think about DJ in the 11th spot? Yeah, absolutely. Like that Suicune uh, he picked up uh, for, I believe it was Minhilgo, um, was, was just huge for him. I had to bring threat like like checks for it. Um, he identified like exactly what he needed to beat me, basically, and I didn't really preserve my win cons well enough. And and he's been he's been showing that 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 forethought, um, really solid prep, and he and he's he's been playing really well lately. So um, even if he doesn't push which he's actually only like one or two wins out of out of playoffs so there's definitely a, a shot um but he's again he's gonna have to finish pretty strong too but yeah. uh if, if anybody can do it he's got the momentum right now yeah he definitely has the momentum and he's gonna have to win some of those head-to-heads at the end of the season to really stack up with people 
just because the differential is a little bit low, but yeah, he's he's surging right now, so watch out for DJ. The league has been put on notice. So at the number 10 spot, we have everybody's favorite, the Russell Little Rockets and the Ratty Blue Wizard. Bumping up a spot to number 10, I think that was a huge victory versus Coach Beard. Ratty Blue Wizard still in the hunt for playoffs at this point, and I think if I had one thing to say about this week's battle, it really came down to the fact that Machamp had a very good matchup versus his team, and the fact that he was able to put himself in a position where Machamp wasn't just breaking through the team and causing just utter destruction means that he was able to play really, really well and come out with the victory. That's why we bumped him up the spot to number 10. But what do you think about the Ratty Blue Wizard? Yeah, I think he's he's definitely had some ups and downs this season, just himself and, and, and his confidence-wise. But he's he's always a top-tier battler. Like, he shows in these big matchups um, why he's, you know, why he's always competing. And uh, don't lose hope, Steven. Uh, if anybody can do it, you still can. Um He's he's always like he's always got the tech too. That's that's the greatest thing about Steven is um, he'll bring a lot of surprise sets, but also very um, very viable still. Yep. So number ten spot locked in with the Russellville Rockets. Now we'll move on to number nine, which is the last team on this slide before we show you the top eight for this week. And we've got the Moon Valley Mewtwo Brandon dropping one spot to the number nine slot. So this week, Brandon had to face Coach Carlos, who has only one loss in the season. It was a very close battle. Unfortunately, we did drop Brandon because he did take a loss and felt like the top eight teams that are there this week really deserve to be there based on their play recently. So I think for Brandon, it's been a story of he's beat every team that has a losing record. He's lost to the teams that have a winning record. And I think for him, finishing out the season, it'll be, you know, is he able to get a few wins, really lock up that four slot, which looks wide open at this point in the mm -hmm. Alola division. So what do you think about Coach Brandon here at number nine? I think he's he's in every game that he's in. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got a really scary team. Like, I was definitely very worried when I had to face him. I was lucky enough to squeeze out a uh, win. Um, but um, if you just look at some of his battles this season against, uh, like against Steven, um, what was, there was another one against Shea. He played really well. Um, he really knows like how to make the the solid reads, um, and and he has a really balanced team. So I'd I'd look out for him, uh, make it a comeback. All right, so here we go. We're gonna reveal the one through eight slot by starting off with number eight, and we've got the Arizona Volcarona dropping one spot to the number eight spot, and I think that was because I battled this him battled him this week. He took a loss. But he's still sitting at the number four spot in Cantu. If the season ended today, he would be in the playoffs. I think hyper offense has been something that Mark's either lived or died by all season. And I think it's something that could carry him to a playoff spot. So what do you think about Coach Mark this season in the LDL? Sitting at number eight this week. Yeah, for sure. He's He knows his play style and, and he's good at it. Um, it is a double-edged sword, though, um, just as with Jordan. I believe their match was like... 15 turns or something yeah exactly <laughs> um yeah but uh mark won last season he's he's a very talented battler um he he knows how to build his team and to do what he needs to do and what he's what he's doing right now is putting the pressure on getting big kills um and yeah i think i think he has a very strong chance to make playoffs and and make a late run uh with his current team. All right, so moving on to the number seven spot, we have one of the other teams that fell quite a bit based on this week. We've got the Victorville Victini, and right now, I mean, if the season today, Anthony, I think, is your most improved battler. He's locked oh, yeah. in the playoff spot. He has done a lot this season. Unfortunately, he ran into the power that was sub- Belly Drum, Salicberry, Darmanitan, and that just went through his team. Um, and it's one of those sets where, you know, you don't, you're not really expecting it, but if someone brings it and you're unprepared for it, it's it can just 
run right through your team, especially with an ability like Sheer Force boosting things like Fire Punch as well, too. So overall, I think it's something that if they play again, which would be in the playoffs if Jesse's able to make it and Anthony's able to make it, that should be a really good rematch to consider how both teams are going to change things up. But what do you think about the Victor Vilvictini here at the number seven spot? I think he's, yeah, he's definitely found his style too. Um, it's hard to break down his team for obvious reasons if you just look at some of the Mons. Um, I think uh, he had a tough matchup this week uh, knowing that, that Jesse can play a, a pretty offensive uh, setup style um, and he just wasn't able to quite stop that uh, that setup and, and it ended up costing him. But but again, yeah, you learn from your mistakes, the experience, it, it it helps you in the long run. And if they play again, yeah, that'll be it'll be huge. Yep. And uh, speaking of a huge matchup, Coach Jesse, the actually I stand corrected, Coach Jesse, the highest riser this week in the power rankings by virtue of beating the Victorville Victini, moving up to the number six spot. He is out on the fringe of making the playoffs at this point, but I think with the victory and the commanding victory that he had against Coach Anthony, he has really put him in a position where he can finish strong and grab that playoff spot. Uh, he still has Coach Mark on the schedule, and as long as he's able to beat Mark, as long as he's able to beat Coach Chris, and potentially... He's got Randward. Yeah, well, really, I think his path to the playoffs is he's got to beat Mark, he's got to beat Chris, and he has to tie records with either Anthony, Mark or Chris and he's in the playoffs so he's got a really strong mm -hmm. point at doing that and he's uh he's got better with roster transactions uh, throughout the season so I think now that their rosters are locked in I think he's got a really strong team and I think he's going to be able to make a very good push towards the end of the season he plays uh he plays Randward he plays me he plays Mark he plays Chris he plays Steven so he's he's definitely got a lot of work ahead of him but if anybody can do it it's the Jet Man who really is kind of the wild card of the league. Like, he's, he's a really good battler, and so excited to see him here at six. Yeah, for sure. All right. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and get you kind of dive into uh, the outback Kamala here, too. Yeah, no, I uh, I really like uh, Jesse's style because he's kind of all over the place, which is honestly, like, in a, in a counter-team format, being unpredictable can be a huge asset. Um it's just uh, not letting yourself getting uh, tilted <laughs> is one thing, um, and just making the the safe reads. And he he built how he needed to to set up that Darmanitan to win this week, and uh, I think he executed it perfectly. So yeah, very nice. And yeah. uh, yours truly at the number five spot. So taking a number five spot, former LDL champion here, the Winnipeg Jellies and, and Coach Matt. Uh, so if you want to talk about yourself, you can. I, I, I kind of hate talking about myself, so I'll just give you the analysis of you. Uh, but I think for you, you've shown that you can beat anybody in this league. Um, and also... Lose to anybody. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you really are a wild card. And I think the fact that, like... Like, I think it has a lot to do with, you know, anybody that's got the former champion tag on their back, they get everybody's best game every single week. So having to try to run the gauntlet as a former champion is, is really difficult. Uh, I think you've done a really good job of that. Dropping two spots after a loss to DJ, but by no means out of it. The number two seed, I believe, in the Alola Conference. And I think yep. you've made some really powerful moves to take advantage of some of the other Pokemon on your roster, such as you know getting a Rapid Spinner to be able to Huge. set uh, webs and not have to defog them. I think that's really good. And so excited to see what you can do to close out the season. But uh, any any thoughts on yourself? Yeah, I'll just say um, I've been kind of playing with a bit of a different style than I'm used to, um, but I think I got a handle on it now. Obviously, my losses have been to teams under 500, but <laughs> again. Uh, Everybody, everybody plays their best. Uh, well, every week, but um, I think I've got, I've got definitely better games out of, out of those three opponents. Um, yeah. 
You got a target on your back, so what can I say? I, I, I ran, Ranward has two. That's I, that's another thing. Yep, yep, and uh, getting to Ranward, the Toronto Totodile sitting at number four. I think you could safely say that one through five in this league has a huge target on their back every single week. Uh, but despite that, uh, and despite the fact that he gets everybody's best prep every single week, the Blazing Squid pulling up here at the number four spot. Four spot, sorry. And uh, this week he took on bring that up uh, he took on coach Jordan and Jordan gave him everything he could handle and uh, Randward was still able to defend his or basically def defend off Jordan and the hyper offense archetype uh, I think he built really well for this team even if he didn't necessarily had a switch he was able to make a good sack get something in and immediately pressure Jordan's team so uh, that's why we got him here at four Another former champion, another force to be reckoned with. What do you think about the Toronto Toto Dial and Coach Blazing Squid? I think he's built a really, really nice, balanced team that works for him. Uh, yeah, he's play, he played well this week. Um, yeah, again, he he got a, a great game out of Jordan, uh, just like he's got out of DJ, just like he got out of Shea. Um, like everybody's been been uh, giving Squid a good battle and and. Uh, he's handled it, like, for the most part, like, he's in playoffs, and that's, that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Right, and, uh, speaking of two people that are linked by souls right now. Oh, boy. Nice, uh, I hope, if, if you're watching Blazing Squid and Thumb Brother 2, you can thank me later for the, the plug there for your soul link. If you haven't checked it out, please go check it out. Number three and number four teams in LDL here in the power rankings this week have their own platinum I guess I think it's platinum. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And they're also uh, former champions back to back as well. Yeah, former champions. Hey, just uh, two two brothers linked by souls. Uh, we got the Salt Lake City Swampert and Thumb Brother Two at the number three spot, jumping up three spots this week too. So, I, if I can say anything for Brennan, it's I I'm not sure what he does the first three weeks of the season. It seems like every season I've been in with him, he's he's lost like the first three games and then just pulls up out of nowhere and starts winning a bunch of games and goes on a streak. So I, you know, I think it's a testament to him getting comfortable with a team. He was able to just absolutely control the game with Chris. And the week prior, he was able to beat the number six team with a clean sweep of Nito King. Uh, he's been on fire lately. And I think he's definitely a force to be reckoned with climbing up the Canto standings. What do you think about Brennan here at the number three spot? I think Brennan's always a threat. Um, I know I, I don't want to say um, respected him more, but definitely feared him more uh, in the earlier seasons. And I'm starting to realize that I probably should again because um, he's he's getting his groove back, and uh, he's definitely showing everyone why he's a former champion. Right, I agree, and definitely forced to be reckoned with another guy with a huge target on his back. Uh, speaking of that, we've got the Des Moines Darmanitan and Coach Carlos at the number two spot. One of the two seven and one teams. I think you could make the case that he's probably the number one as well because he's actually beaten me and I'm also seven and one. So I think at this point, Carlos. It's like one A one B. Yeah, I think one A one B. I think really what it comes down to is my one loss comes to a one loss team and his one loss comes to a four loss team. So uh, I think either way. You can easily make the case that he's the number one team. But we got him here at the number two spot for this week. And he had a very close match with Coach Brandon this week. Was able to get out on top. He's just had great prep week in and week out. I've been really impressed with what he's done with Kofa Grigas. Um, when he took the Ghost DMZ, I wasn't sure how he would maximize value. But the fact that you could just run Ghostium on Kofa Grigas, even if you know it's coming, it's so hard to stop. And uh, he's been really, really good this season. What do you think about the Des Moines Bar Man and Coach Carlos at number two? I think Carlos is one of the most terrifying battlers uh, in this league. Uh, he always shows up uh, in other leagues. I've faced him. He's always, always uh, a very tough opponent. Um, yeah, that Ghostium tech, like, just sounds scary to me because i'm playing carlos in the next little bit um and uh you know you can't knock it off and and it's just stupid bulky so i'm i'm not looking forward to that but uh hopefully it'll be a good battle uh carlos is 
top tier, and he deserves to be right near the top. Yeah, definitely watch out for the Z curse. Uh, he got me with that week one, and yeah, he's just he's really he's played a really well, or he's played really well with Copa Grigas this season, as well as all the other Mons in his team. A lot of really good balance there. I like the transaction that he's made, especially to pick up Mill Tank. I think that j just. Mill tank saps it prepared with a Gastrodon that's just really oh. tough to break, especially with Zapdos. Zapdos, Gastrodon, Mill tank. Oh god, I'm just having nightmares thinking about it. But yeah, we've got uh, the Des Moines Darmanitan at number two. Uh, we also have myself, the Birmingham Aeron, at number one. I don't really like talking about my battles too much. I will say this though, I've been really happy with the team that I drafted. I drafted it thinking that pretty much most games I'm going to bring Coco Curum just because they're 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 just so powerful and they've they've really been the reason that I think I can make a claim to the number one spot at this point um, and I've had a really fun season just getting to build and try to figure out uh, things I can do with the team and I've made a few roster transactions at this point Nito Queen has been able to pick up three kills in each game so far since picking it up uh, so overall really happy and got my my buddy Tang growth uh, so I yeah. couldn't be happier, and uh, yeah, really excited to finish out the season. Yeah, for sure. I uh, I'm always impressed by uh, by how Arthur plays. Um, he's definitely always a threat. Um, I'm definitely not looking forward to that week 15 matchup. Um, but I uh, I am gonna make an unbiased opinion here that that uh, the the Tang growth transaction was. Uh, was a definitely a solid one for both parties involved, yeah, um, so myself being the other one. But um, but yeah, this is a definitely a very balanced team. I really like the wall core, like Quagsire, Skarmory, mm -hmm. Tangrowth. Oh, that's just scary. Yeah, it's um, a lot of fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be our top 16 guys. So uh, before we leave you, we're definitely gonna hit you with what we thought was our battle of the week. So if you stayed this long, thank you so much. I just want to put the plug in for next week's power rankings. It is going to be great. It should be the Blazing Squid and Thumb Brother 2 coming in with next week's power rankings. I believe they're also set to play next week as well. So that'll be interesting, yep. right? The last time Blazing Squid did the power rankings, he did it with Carlos after their battle. We'll see if he can come out on top and then host the host either a salty Salt Lake City Swamperts or a salty squid on the next week of uh, power ranking so we'll be interested to watch that for sure but yeah here we go battle of the week is the ratty blue wizard and coach beard please go check out this battle it came down to the very last turn and yeah just just overall battle i don't know if you got a chance to watch this one or, or not Matt. I, I i watched most of it yeah yeah it was it was back and forth it was it was you know down to the wire uh, Definitely could have gone either way, and I think it's well-deserved Battle of the Week. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much. If you took some time out of your day to watch this, please, please tune in to next week's Power Rankings with the Blazing Squid and Thumb Brother 2. They should be bringing that to you probably sometime next weekend. And, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Matt, uh, if you want to tell them goodbye, we'll go ahead and head out of here. This has been the Lazy Ghost. And it's been Mega Matt. Thanks, guys, and see you around.